Hey, hey, welcome back. Uh, it's day three, uh, starting to kind of get a rhythm, uh, which is fun. Uh, I think we've got a really good app for you today as well. Uh, I wanted to first introduce my, my crew that was with me yesterday, I forgot, um, but they are, uh, they are still here. So we got uh, Keegan, age eight, uh, Mommy and Bowen working together, uh, and then we've also got McKinley. Uh, you guys want to say good morning? Good morning. <laughs> you guys work this in the morning, right? All right, so let's go ahead and show you what we're up to today. Uh, so today's mission. Uh, so we are building a game called Amazing Game. It's a pun. All right, Amazing Game is what we're after today. Uh, and what we've got today is that you're going to get some custom images from the internet. That's what we're going to start with today. Um, to where you have a hero. So my hero in this case is the pigeon. Um, a target that they're trying to get to, so I'm trying to get to the hot dog, um, and then also a villain. Uh, and so my villain in this case is the duckling. He's a sneaky duckling. Uh, but your goal is to get around a maze, so you're going to have to draw the maze, uh, and get to the hot dog, um, or whatever your target is to try to win. Now, I'm showing you this with, um, with my characters, the pigeon, the duckling, and the hot dog. Um, and so there he loses, so he has to go back to the start. Uh, but what you're going to do is you're going to come up with your own uh, things. Um, in fact, you can probably do this uh, first, like before we even get started today. Uh, so uh, like with your adult, think about three images. Uh, so you need a hero. Um, in this case, it's my pigeon. You need the target that your hero is trying to get to. Uh, and then you need some villain that's going to be like zooming around the screen trying to do things. So um, <coughs> hopefully with a little bit of adult supervision, uh, open up uh, Google um, and decide what you want to search for. So I'm going to make mine today um, with a different theme, just because it can be whatever theme you want, right? And so I'm going to make mine with kind of like a, a VeggieTales theme. You can tell what we watch uh, around town. We did a Mo Williams one was the example there. We watched Mo Williams uh, on YouTube uh, and then VeggieTales. So the way you find a good image is you put in the thing you want to find. So I want to find Larry Boy from VeggieTales. Now just searching the internet, maybe you'll find a good image, but, but, but perhaps not. So you want to filter those results by clicking on the word images in Google. Now I've got a lot of images. I can do one better though. Um, I want an image with a transparent background because I don't want rectangles uh, going around my screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on tools uh, and then color transparent. Now what this is going to do, uh, whoops, uh, what this is going to do is this is going to filter those results uh, for ones with transparent backgrounds. So I'm going to find one that I like, uh, maybe I like this one right here the best, uh, and click on it. And then I need to save this to my computer. So I'm just going to right click uh, and say save image as. Um, and you can see that I've actually prepared uh, this in advance. So I chose to save three images. I chose to save a Larry Boy, a Bob, and a Motato. Change the file names because they always come down as, as crazy file names to where it's a nice simple name. Then that way when you import it into to Tinker, uh, you'll be all set. So pause the video uh, and get yourself three images. A hero, a villain, and a target, uh, which I've already done. Um, and then once you've got those saved to your computer, then come back. So pause it and go do that. Everybody got their images? All right. So now everybody's got their images. Now let's bring them in uh, to Tinker. So I guess what I need to do first is I need to go create a new project. So create a new project. Uh, you can click on blank project, that works fine, but I always like to click on blank block coding project. I'm 99.99% .99 sure they're the same, uh, but I still click on uh, blank block coding project. Now inside of here, I've currently got my monster. Uh, I don't need my monster, so I'm just going to delete him. So I clicked on the little three dots uh, and delete, uh, and so now he's gone. Now what I want to do is I want to add my actors one at a time. So I'm going to click on Add Actor. I'm going to click on Upload Actor. And I'm going to go find where on my computer I save them. Uh, probably it's easiest just to put them right into your Downloads folder. Uh, so here I'm going to bring in Larry Boy. When you bring in an image, uh, they may come in like Jumbo, right? So my Larry Boy came in huge. Um, just grab the, the handles uh, and shrink them down to a good size. Larry Boy is going to be walking through the maze, and so just like the ship yesterday, if I make him just kind of small, then I can make a more complex maze, right? 
Uh, next up, I want to upload, uh, I'll do my target. So Larry Boy is trying to get to Bob. I thought about trying to, um, to bring in Bob and then I could kind of like put him in jail, uh, maybe or something like that. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'll do that as a feature, but he's trying to get to Bob. You can start your hero wherever you like, but usually uh, I like to do some corner, right? So I'll do the lower left corner of where he's starting. And then my target, uh, I don't know, I'll move him around later. Uh, and then I also need my villain. So I'm going to say upload actor, uh, and I'm going to bring in my villain, uh, who, if you happen to know VeggieTales, uh, is Motato. Um, and I kind of like for my villain to be a little bigger. It makes him scary, right? Uh, and so that is uh, what you need to do. Uh, to kind of get yourself set up, um, and you need to size your images. Uh, just to give you some ideas, I'm going to see what uh, what the family has decided to do. Uh, so Keegan, what uh, what is your theme today? Minions. minions. He likes minions. So who's your hero, your villain, and your target? My hero is the minion. My okay. Villain is that minion, and my hero. And he's my target is trying to get to the party. Bowen, what's your theme today? Good guy. This is the bad guy, and this is where the good guy is trying to get to. Cool. So they're all uh, geckos. You've got a good gecko, and you've got an evil gecko. He looked really evil. And McKinley, what's your theme today? Horses. Horses. So we've got a horse. Yeah. And then the horse is trying to get to the carrot and avoid the mountain lion. Avoid the mountain lion. That's uh, that's a good plan. All right. So you guys have your images. Uh, you brought them into Tinker. Uh, and we're ready to start uh, doing some stuff with them. That sounds great. All right. All right, so let's dive in and get started. Uh, first, I'm going to make my stage just a little smaller, just so I've got a little more screen real estate. I also want to save my game. Uh, so you can title yours whatever you'd like. Uh, I call this Amazing Game, because it's a pun. And I like puns. Um, I could go ahead and publish it now, but I'm not going to, but this is Connecting with Code 2020, uh, Day 3. So I'll just hit Save for now, and then later I'll, I'll, I'll publish it. All right, so we've got to decide uh, where we want to start. Uh, we could start by drawing some of the, uh, the grid-like maze. Oh, I forgot to mention on that grid-like maze, um, if you try to walk through the walls, uh, it doesn't let you, right? So you can't walk through the walls, so we have to add code to actually enforce uh, not walking through walls. So we could draw the maze first. Uh, we could do our hero walking around first. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, I like code, so let's start with code. So find your hero. So the hero for me is Larry Boy. Uh, and I'm going to click on Larry Boy. Um, and I can see that I'm going to start editing his code because I've got my little icon in here. So what I want to do with Larry Boy is um, we will have an on start in a minute. But instead, we're going to move him with arrows. So I'm going to bring over um, when up arrow pressed. And let's go and add some code to it, and then we'll duplicate it, because we're going to do it like four times, right? So uh, after we press the up arrow, we want some motion to happen. The motion that we want to happen is we want Larry Boy, uh, or whoever our hero is, to move up 10 pixels. There's a couple ways we could do that. Uh, one way is we could do this like change Y by 10 pixels, but we're going to do it different. We're going to point in that direction. Uh, so we need point in direction 90 degrees. And the reason we're pointing, by the way, this is just kind of a spoiler alert, is because whenever we hit a wall, we want to go the opposite direction. So keeping track of which way we're pointing is going to help us keep track of which way we bounce backwards, right? So we're going to point in that direction. Now, right now it says point in direction 90, uh, but we want the up arrow to go up. Um, and so we actually want to click on this circle uh, to the up arrow. Uh, and in, in Tinker, up is uh, zero degrees, uh, which, again, scratch is different, but uh, I'm sure that it doesn't really uh, matter that much. Um, and then the next thing we want to do is we want to go to the top command and grab a move 10 pixels. Great. Um, and one thing that I like to do when I code, uh, it, it's got a fancy name. It's called Iterative Enhancements. Um, I like to test it whenever I can. So right now, if I start my game, uh, and I hit the up arrow, uh, Larry Boy should go up. Now, one thing did happen that might have been surprising to you um, is my Larry Boy actually uh, turned, right? So I hit play, uh, and then I hit up arrow, uh, and my Larry Boy turned. Well, I, I actually didn't want him to turn, so I want to fix that. 
So we, we wrote just a little bit of code and it's already got a bug. Here's how we're going to fix it. We're going to set his uh, rotation style to where the image doesn't rotate. Does that make sense? Uh, the way we do that is we go to events. Um, we grab an on start. So we almost always have some kind of on start. And then we want to go looking for a very like obscure command. Um, it's called set rotation style. And we want to set his rotation style to doesn't rotate. There's multiple ways we can do this, but I like to do it via code. So go to motion. Um, and let's go looking for this uh, odd command uh, right here. Set rotation style. And we can set the rotation style to all around, which is the default, which is what he is now. Left, right, which our monster did that in like the very first day, or don't rotate. And I actually want him, the image, I want the image to don't rotate. Uh, so if I run it again now and I hit up arrow, you can see that he kind of goes up and he doesn't rotate. And that's going to work out better. Now, if you try to go left and right, he's not going to do that. If you try to come back down, he's not going to do that either, right? Um, and so we need to add uh, those other things. I find the easiest way to add it is to uh, click on up arrow, do a control C, a control V, uh, and that will copy it and paste it. And then you have to do all four directions, right? Um, so maybe I'll do left arrow, and I want the left arrow to make me point in the left direction, so negative 90 in this case. So see if you can do uh, the next two without me. Uh, it should be a, a pretty clear pattern. Uh, so go ahead and pause the video uh, and see if you can get uh, all the different directions uh, worked. All right, so if you paused it and tried it, <coughs> you should come up with uh, commands that look like this. Uh, so you should have up, down, right, and left. Uh, and then of course you wanna try it to make sure it works. Uh, there could be all kinds of little things that are wrong, but you should have up, go up, down, go down, right, goes right, and left, goes left. And in addition to moving, he's also like pointing in that direction, uh, but the image isn't rotating, and that, and that works out um, <coughs> good later, right? By the way, uh, just to kind of mention some little mistakes that you can make, maybe you, you clicked off and it's 175 or something like that. That's okay, it's not the end of the world. You can actually just type in this box though. Uh, it's just a giant pain because it tries to like auto-complete. Um, so do the best you can with it, um, but um, I'm <clears throat> trying to make sure that they do end up um, at these different degrees. I had trouble typing in it there, um, but make sure you've got uh, motion ready to go. All right, so now we've got our hero's ability to move. Uh, I think what I'd like to do next is go tackle the drawing, say, uh, the drawing step. So in order to do some drawing, uh, we're going to have to create a background on our stage. So our stage has no backgrounds or anything. So uh, click on the gear icon for the stage. So this little gear that's right over here. For the um, background, what we want to do, uh, sorry, for the stage, what we want to do is add a background. So go ahead and click on add background. And then we want to draw a background from scratch. So we're not using, uh, using anything at all. So click on the little um, art paintbrush up here, draw an image, uh, and then you have to click again on draw an image. I always think that's silly that, that you draw twice. All right, so now we're gonna do some drawing. Now what I'm gonna be careful of to, to begin with is I'm gonna be careful to make sure that my zoom level is such that I can see the whole board. Because the first thing I wanna do is I wanna put a ring around the outside. Um, and if I'm accidentally zoomed in, because I do this all the time, and I draw a ring around the outside, it's not really around the outside, right? Now what I want to do is I want to pick what color my maze is going to be. Sometimes it can be thematic uh, to your characters, um, but it also, it can be nice if you pick a color um, that isn't likely to appear in your characters, that, that it's not a big deal, but pick a color that you think would be fun. Uh, so mine are, are kind of a veggie tails. I think that veggie tails, I think of green when I think of veggie tails. So I'm going to pick kind of like a greenish color for my maze today. Um, hopefully that's not the exact same shade of green as something in Larry board, but I'll, I'll risk it. Now what I want to do first is I want to draw a rectangle around the whole uh, perimeter. Uh, so to draw rectangles, um, it's actually a shape, uh, which is under the line tool. And what I want to do is I want a hollow rectangle. Now this hollow rectangle has a transparent middle uh, and then a border around the outside. 
Um, I'm going to make the size of mine be 10, just so it's a slightly bigger border. And I'm going to make the opacity be 100%. It's kind of nice to make your, your walls a little thicker. So I think a nice 10 pixel wall will look nice, other than just like a really thin wall. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it to where it's pretty close uh, to as big as it can get. Now if you do a perfect job, then that's great. Uh, but I uh, don't want you to worry about doing a perfect job. Because what happens is this. Once you draw it, um, you have a little bit of a chance to, to move it around until you let go of it. So if you make it, so I did perfect on the top and the right uh, and the bottom. Uh, but my left needs to be adjusted over here. Now, um, if you uh, did uh, not even close to perfect, right, uh, that's fine too. So I'm just going to do mine again. So let's, let's say that I did this, right? So it wasn't even close to perfect. Um, I could just move every one out uh, to get it perfect. Now, if you made it really, really small, uh, then this is going to make it look a little stretchy. Uh, but as long as you're close, uh, it should work out fine. So that is my wall. That's going to make sure that everybody stays in bounds. You can't just like go outside the maze uh, and do stuff. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to use the line tool. Now for the line tool, I'm going to continue to use the same color. I'm going to continue to use 10 pixels and full opacity. Um, and I'm going to draw my maze. Now here's where the creative part comes in. Um, you have to draw a maze to where your hero has to like get through the maze uh, and get to the target. Um, and it has to be possible. Right? So you have to think about how big your sprite is, uh, and there has to be a path uh, by which they can get through. It doesn't have to be like a hard maze to solve, but it should be something that like provides obstacles uh, so that your villain can, can make it hard. Right? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I always kind of like to start with a, uh, a little straight period uh, up on the side, uh, but you can do whatever you want. And I'm thinking about um, you know, my hero, um, and I predict that uh, he can probably get up this chute fine, um, and then he can probably get across the top there. Now, after the initial line, um, you know, I'm going to maybe make him go back down. Um, you can do uh, whatever you want. So go ahead and take a minute uh, and, and draw your, your maze, right? So I'm just going to kind of draw a, a pretty simple maze. Um, and think about where your, your target's going to be. Um, and, you know, think about the fact that they have to get to the target. So I think I'm going to put Bob, he's my target. Uh, somewhere like inside of here, right? And then after you draw a little bit, um, what you'll have to do is you'll have to go check it like with your character and see like where they uh, where they can get through uh, and where you've made a uh, an accidentally impossible game, right? So I don't know, maybe I'll, I'll try that one. And if you don't like something you put in, just do an undo on it uh, and just try again, right? And then once you, so I, I'm, I may be done. I don't really know if I'm done or not. Uh, I'm going to go back, um, and I'm just going to walk Larry Boy around, uh, and I'm going to see if I'm done, right? So I'm just going to kind of say, yep, that seems kind of good. Um, yep, I made it through there. Ooh, that was kind of close. That means that probably something later is in trouble. Now, if I do touch the walls, nothing bad is going to happen to me right now, right? I'm just going to go right through them. Um, but this is where I kind of, like, test my game. Um, and I see, like, this area is probably too easy, right? So I'm probably going to make that a little harder. Uh, and then come around here. Um, and then that's going to be close. So I make it. Try to make sure you make it by more than just, like, one pixel. Uh, because our game's going to need a little bit of freedom. So I think that mine actually wasn't too bad. I think the thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, edit it some more. So I'm going to click on the pencil now. And I'm going to make one spot harder, right? Um, and so I'm going to make this spot right here harder. All right, so I'm going to walk around and help uh, my campers out a little bit, uh, but no reason for you to see that. Uh, so play around until you're pretty happy uh, with your maze. Uh, and I think that, uh, that mine looks, uh, looks pretty good here. All right, so half an hour later, my team's got their mazes drawn, just, just teasing. Uh, but Keegan's uh, got an elaborate plan to add things to his maze. Uh, Bowen, you mind if we see your maze? Oh, looks good. Good looking maze, Bowen. Uh, and then, of course, McKinley. McKinley, do you have a maze? Oh, she's got an elaborate maze. Um, so depending on, uh, on who you are, uh, you might want to make um, kind of uh, simple or kind of complex. 
uh, or Keegan's got a plan to add crazy stuff later. Uh, but make sure you've got a maze uh, that you're happy with. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually add some code for our villain next. So we're going to kind of do this in a, in a weird order today. Um, so what we want to do is if we want to add code for our villain, we have to select our villain from the list. Uh, so my villain is Motato. Um, and what Motato is going to do is he's going to glide around the screen uh, in different places to make it harder uh, for Larry Boy to get to the target. Now this does require a little bit of planning, right? So you have to think about uh, where should he glide to kind of make a fun game. So uh, obviously one of the places I'm going to glide is I'm going to glide like um, into this area uh, and then back out. Um, and then maybe I'll glide somewhere through the bottom. But it's kind of nice to come up with a pattern you think will be kind of fun. So maybe I'll go over and back and then maybe I'll go down. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, but if you have some goal for where do you want your villain to go, to go uh, that can actually be, uh, be better. And uh, we're going to need a sheet of paper for this, uh, so I'm going to have to pause it and go get a sheet of paper because I forgot to get a sheet of paper. Um, and we're going to pick some different places uh, that we want our villain to go to, and we're going to write down those positions. So I'm going to go get my sheet of paper. You should too. All right, welcome back. I got my paper. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to write down different positions uh, for my villain. So I'm going to get him where I want him. Uh, so right now I've kind of got him in the middle. By the way, if you want your stage bigger, uh, you can just click on the stage tab and it'll make it bigger for you. Um, so uh, his first position here, I kind of look down in the, the corner. I can't move the mouse though. I just have to look. Um, it's negative 32 and 90. And maybe that's what he'll start first. And so I'm going to take my uh, pencil and I'm going to write down uh, negative, looks like it moved to 2891. So I've written that down. Next, I have to pick a new spot for him. So maybe I'll move him over here next. Uh, and I'll write that number down. So I'll just say that's negative 550, uh, 52. Again, I'm looking in that lower right corner. Uh, I can't move my mouse there because they don't change the position. So go around and get a few positions uh, where you want your villain to glide to. And he's going to smoothly glide uh, between them. Uh, so I've got mine. Uh, I actually just, uh, just did it already. Um, and I've got uh, a list here. All right, so let's go back to our code. So our code, uh, make sure you're selecting your villain. Like this. It's going to have an on start, which we've done a couple times, so I did that kind of quickly. It's the first thing in the first category. We're going to do something forever, so I go into control. Uh, I find a forever loop. And then what we're going to do is for each position, we're going to bring over uh, a glide to. So here's a glide right here. Uh, and what I like to do is I like to put in the number of commands that are necessary first. Uh, so it looks like I've got seven commands. Um, so you can, you know, maybe wrote down three, maybe you wrote down like 30. Um, probably I wouldn't do more than seven. Seven's quite a few. And now I'm just going to start typing in my numbers, right? In general, I like the glide to happen over three seconds. That's kind of a smoother uh, glide. And what I do to hop between them um, is I hit tab. Um, you don't have to hit tab. You can click into each one. That's fine. Tab makes it go a little faster, right? Uh, and so this is a good game for parents and kids to do together. Uh, so you write down all your numbers, uh, and then you have the parent uh, hold the list, um, and they just say, you know, where am I supposed to go to next? And so you just tell them. So I think I've got mine uh, almost done. Oops, uh, I tried to do a Went a little too fast there. So a three there, uh, five seventy one. Maybe I'll speed up the video to where you don't have to watch me type every single number. Uh, but I'm almost there, right? Five two five. So pause the video uh, and your speed. Uh, you don't have to go at my speed on things. Uh, and make sure you've got all your positions right. Uh, and then when you hit play, something kind of neat should happen. Is your villain should glide around uh, to different positions. Now uh, here's where game design. You have to make sure that your game is playable and fun, right? So, for example, uh, with mine, uh, Larry might be going a little too slow, right? By the way, I can still go through walls, but we're going to fix that with our code. Um, but you have to make sure that um, it's possible to not only get through your maze, but possible to do it um, without hitting your villain. And the idea that your game is, ah, with good strategy, um, you could avoid where your villain gets to. Um, so I think it's wise to memorize where your villain goes, 
uh, but you can actually like make sure your game is playable. So mine is going to be hard. <laughs> Doable. So I'm going to give it a go for now. So I'm going to call it good enough. Uh, the next thing I want to do, just because I was thinking about it, is I want to play with um, letting you change the speed of your hero. So right now, the speed of our hero is that every time there's a press, he moves 10 pixels. Now, here's what happens in coding all the time. This is a good lesson. Let's say I wanted him to go faster. Well, I change this one to 15. Well, I've got to change them all to 15, right? So I've got in my code, you can just watch for now, I've got in my code the number for his speed in, in four different places. I say, oh, I want to go faster than that. I want to actually go at 20. And if you have this problem a lot, where you've got the same number in your code at multiple places and you want them to all match, silly to have to change them in all four places every time. So we're going to make a variable. This is a, a coding concept that people use a lot. It, it's called avoiding magic numbers. So I've got this magic number in my code in four places. Whenever that happens, it's a good time to make a variable. So go to variables and then click on create variable. And I like to call this variable speed. And he's for only this actor. Now this variable is different than we've ever used variables to avoid having a magic number in many places. It's not going to change, right? So it's not ever going to change. We're going to set it once. So I'm going to grab a set. Uh, I'm going to set the speed once. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and let you uh, look at what I did here. I, I did that a little fast. Um, I'm going to set it once, and then I'm going to use it in multiple different spots. So I created this variable 15, and then I'm going to use it in all four of these spots. So instead of having this magic number in four places, uh, I drop in the variable speed uh, into everywhere I use it. So this appears to be the exact same code, uh, but it's better because now you can change the speed in one place and it changes it everywhere. It's pretty simple to see the four places here, but it, in code it happens all the time uh, where, where you do things like this. Um, and so now I've got my code uh, to where it's easy to maintain. Um, it doesn't repeat myself, so that's uh, dry, don't repeat yourself. Um, and I've avoided the magic number of 20 appearing in multiple places inside my code. Um, and you can also play with your speed until you think that your, your game is good and possible. Oh, I've got a, a vicious spot there in my game. Oh, well, I'll have to figure that out. Um, I think 20 is fine for me, uh, but you can go at whatever speed uh, you would like to go. All right, uh, good time to click on save, right? So we've done, done a lot of things. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to make Larry um, no longer be able to pass through walls. Uh, adding this is going to make my game a little harder to test, uh, but it's, it's going to be important uh, to make Larry not pass through walls. So click on your hero. Um, this is something we have to always check. We're going to check, am I touching a wall? Am I touching a wall? Am I touching a wall? So that is a if statement that is for inside of a forever loop. So go to control, find a forever loop. Stick it onto uh, Larry's uh, in his on start thread. And the, he does a couple things forever, uh, but one of them is he always checks, uh, am I touching a wall? Now, touching a wall is a color, so am I touching this color? Now, it's a good thing you got your pencil and paper because we're about to have to use it again, right? Um, so we want to know what color is my maze? So I've got to go back in and edit my maze. I'm not going to really edit it so that I can figure out what color that green is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the pencil for my stage. And so that pencil is going to take me into edit mode for the stage. And then I want to figure out exactly what shade of green did I use. So this process we used before, but it takes a while to get it down. You click on the eyedropper. You click on the color. Then you click on the color chooser and you want the hex value. Um, I am sure that Tinker is gonna make this process better someday. I'm 100% convinced of it. Uh, but today, uh, this is the best way to get the color uh, that I happen to know of. Uh, again, colors will be numbers and letters. A, um, and it can be hard to tell the difference between like um, an O and a zero, 
but it's actually not hard because you know it's a zero. It can also be hard to tell the difference between like um, an eight and a B. Now that one is hard, um, but get your number, uh, write it down. Uh, and then you can go back to your code. So you have to kind of like exit the stage here. And what I want to put in here is I want to say if touching color, then do stuff. Touching color is a sensing, so you know it's going to be in sensing. And I want touching color. Looks like it's the fourth one down. Click in this box and type. Typing in this box can be a little annoying because it's kind of If you get it, this is just like we did with with other things. If you get it, you'll get a confirmation that it worked because the uh, the background will change to that color. And so I can see that I have a match between my my maze green uh, and my touching color green here. All right. So once you've got uh, once you've fought with it enough uh, to make that work, I had to help my campers out a little bit. We're ready to do stuff inside of this code. So now he's going to know, hey, I am touching this color. Now I want something to happen. So the thing that I want to happen is I want him to bounce off, right? So this is where uh, a little theatrics is good. Um, but like if you walk um, and then you hit a wall, um, when you hit a wall, you do a couple things. You turn around and then you take a step backwards, right? And so that's what we're gonna do. So the first thing we're gonna do when we hit a wall is turn around. So uh, you turn around, we'll see how good people are with their angles. So we're gonna turn some number of degrees to turn around. Um, Keegan, do you have any idea how many degrees do I need to turn to turn completely around? I need to turn a, turn a 180. That's right. So I need to turn 180 degrees. And then I need to step away from the wall uh, the right number of pixels. So I'm going to use a move. Um, and now we need to move away that magic number again so that we kind of like bounce back. Um, and so we need to move um, speed speed pixels away, right? Um, maybe instead of speed, I should have called it like distance, but that's okay. So I need to drop into that, instead of move 10 pixels, I need to move speed pixels. So I got to go to variables, uh, and I got to take that speed and I've got to drop it in. Now, uh, I could run it right now, and that would be a fine test, but it, it's going to happen too fast, because um, in, in Tinker, if you touch the wall, it's going to instantly move you back to where you came from, and it's going to be so fast that you're not going to see it. So we're going to put in a really short time delay just so the user can see, yeah, I, I just hit a wall, right? So we're going to put in a really short time delay. So go to control. And the very bottom command, nope, it's not the very bottom, but it's close to the bottom, is wait one second. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, wait just a very small amount. So I'm going to wait. 0 0.05 seconds. And the reason I'm doing that is because you have hit the wall and I want the user to kind of like see themselves inside the wall and then I'm going to move them back. Now it doesn't matter uh, whether it's at the very top uh, or whether it's uh, after the 180, those don't matter, but it does need to be before the move uh, 10 pixels. Um, all right, so we've got enough code that we can try it. So Larry should always be checking to see if he's hitting the wall. If he is hitting the wall, he waits just a second, and then he backs it up. So right now, I can uh, give it a go. So now, whenever Larry hits a wall, uh, he kind of bounces, right? Now, if you um, want to try this during that half-second pause, it is possible to keep moving forwards. So if you, like, really go nuts, you might be able to plow through a wall. Yeah, um, but that's a feature uh, that we... we uh, kind of hide from our users. So uh, there are ways we can fix it, but I'm not worried about it. But when you hit the wall, uh, you bounce off. But know that as the creator of your game, you can plow through a wall if you do it hard enough, right? You just have to hit the button faster uh, than 0 0.05 seconds. All right, going good. Uh, I'm going to click on save just because I'm happy about things. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to um, lose the game if I hit Motato. And I want to win the game uh, if I make it to Bob, right? Uh, so that's my goal next. So I need to always check um, if those things are happening. So I need two more if statements. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm still in uh, Larry Boy. I'm still in my hero. I'm going to add two if statements into my loop. 
So total, I'm checking for three things. Am I touching a wall? And if so, I want to bounce. Um, am I touching Motato? Because uh, if so, I lose. Uh, and am I touching Larry? Because um, if, I, if I am, then I win. Sorry, am I touching Bob? Got the wrong word there. Now, this if statement, so if this condition then, um, is not a color. Uh, we're actually looking for a sprite. So go into sensing. Now in the past we've used touching color, but that's not what we're going to do this time. We're going to use, this is crazy, we're going to use touching mouse pointer. And you're like, well that's weird, why are you saying touching mouse pointer? Uh, and it's because you can change mouse pointer to be um, someone else. So you have to decide which order you want to do things. Maybe I'll do my villain first, so this is my lose first. And then I'll do touching uh, Bob, that's my win. So um, do yours in the same order as mine, that way it'll be less confusing. So do whatever makes you lose first, and then whatever makes you win second. So think about uh, you know, your names of your actors over here, and lose first, win second. So if you lose, uh, you've got to decide what do you, what do you want to happen. Um, you could make the whole game end, that would be fine. Um, or you could just do something and move them back to the start. I think what I'm going to do, and again, this is a design choice that you want, is I'm just going to move them back to the start um, and then say something uh, that's like, you lose, try again, or something like that, right? All right, so now what I need to do is I need to know where Larry is uh, at the start, right? So he is at a certain X and Y, so you need your, your pencil and your paper again. So move your hero to where they start at, um, and look to see what that position is. So for me, it is negative 5, 9, 0, negative 2, 7, 9. Hey, that's almost my phone number. Uh, just teasing. Um, the next thing you want to do is you want to go to motion, um, and you want to find a go to x, y. Now it starts off with an X of zero and a Y of zero, and you want to change that uh, like that. And so now, if I touch Motato, um, it will be uh, back to where I start the game. If you would like, you could also have this command at the start of your code. Um, this is completely optional, but if you click on this handle, you do a control C, control V. You could, if you wanted, uh, move this to also be at the start of your code. And the only value for that is that if somehow you kind of like mess up where Larry's at, like during your development, um, even if I say to start him up here, he's gonna actually like go there when my game starts. So um, if you want, you can have that at the top, not required, uh, but it definitely needs to be here. So what I'm gonna do is if I touch potato, I'm gonna zoom to that spot. Um, and then I'm going to say something. Saying something is in looks, right? Because we're going to have a speech bubble that pops up. Uh, so I'm going to go to looks. Um, and I'm going to uh, look for the giant speech bubble. Here's a giant speech bubble. Oops. And I want to put it right after uh, the go to XY. Um, and I'm going to say, you lose, play again. And you can choose to say this however you want to say it. If you want it to appear as though Larry is saying it, you could use a rectangular speech bubble. Um, you could use a top message, a bottom message, a centered message. Uh, it doesn't matter. Just because it's something I haven't ever tried before, I'm going to say a message right in the center of the screen. Um, and I'm going to make it huge. 48 is pretty huge. All right, maybe 36 is plenty. Now this is going to be pretty easy to test. We just need to run into our villain. And if we run into our villain, it's just going to warp us back to here. Um, and then it's going to say, you lose, play again. So uh, go ahead and try it. So get your uh, hero to where you think they're going to be in trouble. Um, and then whenever it hits it, uh, mine said in giant letters, uh, you lose, play again. Uh, cool, so I can uh, try that one more time. Maybe I'll make it bigger. So I've got to wait for my villain to, to finish his loop so that he can get back over here. I've got to memorize how my villain moves so I can actually win my game. But when he hits him, it says, you lose, play again. I'm pretty happy with that. 
So the nice thing is, uh, oops, um, <laughs> I did something silly. I, oh, I almost exited my whole game. Um, so the nice thing is, is that we're almost there, right? So if we hit Motato, uh, we lose, um, and we're going to let people keep playing. Um, and so now the only thing we need to do is what do we want to have happen if we want to hit Bob? So uh, hitting Bob. So one thing we want to do is we want to um, say you win, right? So if you win, we want to uh, go to looks, find a giant text bubble, uh, and we want to say you win. Um, and again, you could have it look like Larry saying it, you could have it show up on the screen, whatever you want to do. Just for giggles, I'm going to have it look like Larry saying it. You could also do things like change the background color, the font color, uh, whatever you want to do uh, to try your game. Now, once we hit Larry uh, and it says you win, um, we've got to decide what we want to happen in that case as well. Um, so one of the enhancements I'm going to encourage you to make is to make a different like maze. I'm not going to show that, but I'm going to have you like move to some spot and then like show the next maze, right? Um, but for now, uh, we just need to decide what we want to do. Um, so you can do whatever you'd like. Maybe, um, maybe what you want to do is you just want to go back to the start uh, after they finish talking, uh, and then they can just play again if they wanted for now. So I think that that is, is good enough for me. There is no right answer. This is your game. There is no single right answer. Um, but I do want to test it and see if it works. Now, one way to test it is to actually like get to that spot. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but sometimes the best way to test your game is to cheat um, and to figure out how to cheat to make testing easier, right? So I want to test this without going to a lot of work. So it would be really easy to win if Larry started right there, right? So here's what I'm going to do to cheat is I'm going to write down my cheater spot. So my cheater spot is 281, 89. So my code may or may not work. I don't even know yet. I haven't tested it. And in order to test it, I'm going to cheat. So I've got my cheater spot. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add some code that I know I'm going to take out later. Um, and I'm going to add my cheater code just before my forever loop. I'm going to go to my cheater spot. Cheating is good for testing, right? So now, now, this, this line of code, I'm going to have to remember to take it out before I ship my game uh, because it's just for a test. But now when I hit play, Larry goes immediately to my cheater spot, um, and I step over, uh, and I say, you win. So that is how you develop a game uh, by cheating, right? It looked like it worked perfectly to me. I just stepped right over and hit Larry, uh, and I won. Uh, so now I'm ready to delete my cheater code. Um, to delete just that line, uh, you grab the right handle uh, and you drag it out of the game. So there, I, I just drug it out. Uh, so now I think my game is, is ready to go. Uh, so now I'm going to give it uh, one full test. Uh, so it might take me a little while to win my game. Uh, so Motato goes over, and so I use this opportunity to kind of like get around. And then Motato goes down and that way. Now, I happen to know that Motato is going to spend a lot of time over there. So I'm going to just hang out right here for a second until Motato goes past me. Now I'm going to make my run for it, Bob. Ah. All right. So try your game out as well. Uh, see if yours is uh, playable and winnable. Uh, but I think that I uh, have mine to where I can win. So it says you win, and it snaps me back to there. Great, so for me, uh, mine is done. Uh, I might have to give my campers just a minute to finish theirs, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and publish. Um, and I'm also gonna tell you, so I'm gonna give my campers a minute to finish theirs and then I'll help them out. Um, I'm also gonna tell you what I think some fun enhancements are to this game. So one enhancement that I think is fun is to make a second background, like a second maze, right? And the way you can do that, I'll just kind of say enough to get you started is you go into the, the uh, costumes, you say add background, uh, you make a, uh, a new background, right? So maybe I uh, have a new background like this. Um, and then when you win, uh, you go back to here. I'm doing this fast because this is an optional thing, right? 
um, you could actually switch to the next uh, background. Um, and so now, just to show it faster, I'm going to put back in my cheater, cheater code. And so now, when, I, when you win, um, it'll say you win, uh, and then it'll start you on the next level, right? Uh, oh, this level was really hard. No way I'm getting through there. Uh, actually, that color is not my maze color, so I can just walk right through it, right? Yay! Um, and then if I win this level, uh, it says you win, uh, and then it takes me to the next level. And so you can make as many different levels uh, as you would like. Uh, but to make it fun, you do have to use that same maze color. So that's just one enhancement that you can make uh, if you wanted to make your game better. Another thing you can do to make your game better um, is you can add sounds. Uh, people love sounds. But when you win, you can play a sound. When you hit a wall, you could play a sound. Um, just to kind of show how to add one sound, maybe I'll go into Larry Boy. Uh, I'm going to click on Larry Boy's gear. Go to sounds and say add sound. Um, and maybe there's like a, a, a boink or something like that, like a boing. Um, yeah, there's a boing. And so for Larry, uh, maybe if he um, touches the wall, I'll make him go boing, right? Uh, and so I'm going to go sound, uh, play sound until done. Uh, maybe I'll play it uh, right there. So anytime Larry hits a wall, um, he's going to go boing, right? Um, and so <clears throat> just kind of a, an added little feature. So I am intentionally not showing you everything you could do uh, because that's kind of what, what makes the game fun, right? Um, oh, I just realized I should play the Boeing uh, after I move him back, right? Because I have play Boeing until done. Another thing you could do, by the way, is play until done pauses everything. You could also just play it uh, without waiting for it to finish. All right, so I think that, uh, that mine's ready to go. I'm curious to see uh, how my campers fared today. Uh, campers, are you ready for me to, uh, to see how you guys did today? Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> That's what we got today. Uh, I'm sure that we can fix it as we go. So Keegan, how's the, uh, the Minion Project coming along? So you made your speed very fast. Um, and being very fast, you've got a couple, a uh, couple minor bugs. <laughs> so by being so fast, you can kind of walk through some of your walls. I'll tell you what. Hit... Oh, and you're just holding down uh, the movement. Oh, so you're you're like blitzing through things. Looks great, buddy. Did you have fun building that? Do you have ideas for enhancements you might make? Yeah. Right. Bowen, you're up next. Right. Bowen, you ready to show the world your game? So Bowen has uh, Gecko from PJ Mask. Um, so hopefully some of you recognize the, the PJ Mask reference. So Gecko has to try to get through his maze. Nice one, Gecko. Uh, and he's trying to get over to the little Gecko. Whoa, you went the low route. Was that a, was that a design out there, Bowen? Uh, you got the makings of a web designer or a, uh, a game designer. You win! Hi, Bowen, was that pretty awesome? Yeah, did you have fun today? Are you able to speak? <laughs> All right, let's check out McKinley's. All right, McKinley, what have you got? So you've got the horse, uh, and the horse is getting through her elaborate maze. McKinley made fun of me because my maze was so easy. Hey, you walked right through the wall. <laughs> cheaters, cheaters never win. So if you do have a problem with lots of cheaters in your game, take out that, um, that delay of 0 0.05 seconds, uh, and that's going to stop a bunch of cheating. So you can you can decide. You're the game designer. You can decide how you feel about cheating. Uh, but if you wanted to prevent some of that walking through walls nonsense, take that command out, and they won't get the feedback why they can't go through the walls. Uh, they'll just hit the wall, uh, and it just like they just won't be able to move. But that will prevent the cheating uh, that happens, right? Uh, maybe a sound effect is better than a visual, right? All right, so uh, we hope you enjoyed today. I know I had a lot of fun. Um, add some crazy enhancements. Uh, do make sure to share yours uh, with the community. That way uh, I can see it and other people in the class can see it, uh, and it makes it fun. All right, we'll see you next time. That's it. Bye. Mm -hmm.